We are Arkanis, we belong to this land. They are the ones who intervene, they are the ones who, who are foreigners into this land. They are the ones who invaded. Recently when Tansin has uh, declared this uh, particular message that Rohingya is no longer welcomed here and they should be moved out, uh, UN Hesia should resettle and UN Hesia said this is not our problem. Uh, and at the same time in Parliament, if you would like to uh, uh, see some of the clips that Aung San Suu Kyi, who has uh, been nominated in 1991 as a Nobel Peace Prize when I personally think that this is a test for her, but if she doesn't do this well, she don't deserve a Nobel Peace Prize. I'm really sorry to say that because when, she, when Mr. Tan Sen, President Tan Sen has declared this, she has particularly clapped on this and she has agreed on this point. And Rohingya, who have been uh, hoping uh, towards uh, getting democracy, towards getting recognized in the land, and uh, supporting Aung San Suu Kyi, and today she uh, turned her, her blind eye. Okay, let's and take that point Rohingya out with uh, Justin, if we could. I mean, at the heart, at the crux of this problem, I guess, is the nationality law and the refusal to recognize um, me, um, the well, Rohingya is, as citizens, yeah, isn't it? Right. I mean, I mean it why? Is. What, what is the big um, threat to Myanmar if these people are given citizenship from the perspective well, of uh, Myanmar uh, authorities? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's take those one at a time. Um, uh, it is absurd that um, uh, in the 21st century you should have three quarters of a million people who are stateless despite the fact that the majority of them are a fixed abode and have been for for several several generations uh, on the point about Aung San Suu Kyi um, when the uh, communal violence backlash uh, uh, hit the Ro Rohingyas in in Rakhine state she came out um, with expressions of sympathy for them but so far she said nothing about granting them the rights of citizenship uh, and I think somebody's got to do that in 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 Myanmar uh, and I would wish it with her or indeed President Thane saying now President Thane saying at the moment uh, is uh, the whole business of ethnic insurgency and ethnic division uh, has bedeviled Burmese history for uh, decades and decades and decades um, and it's not just the, the Rohingyas it's the Karen the Shan the uh, blah 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 uh, pr and President Thane saying give him credit uh, has made uh, national reconciliation a priority and even this week he's been talking to ethnic leaders unfortunately the Rohingyas are kind of removed from that the suggestion that the UNHCR should be involved is absolutely right um, the suggestion that they should be deported in, in some way is a form of ethnic cleansing uh, and that is a regrettable thing. All right, if we can bring Dina back into the discussion as we're looking at, you know, what the outside world can do here. Muslim countries in general don't have the biggest balance of trade, do they, with Myanmar? And um, I guess the Muslim world and members of the OIC are not the countries that Myanmar or on top of the list of the countries that Myanmar would look to for foreign investment and so on. But couldn't members of the OIC perhaps use more of their influence with those countries that are the big trade and economic partners of Myanmar and make it an important uh, policy consideration for them and say, look, you've got to use your influence with this country to stop this sort of persecution? Yes, absolutely. Um, actually, um, that's why we have uh, taken our votes to um, the International Forum and the United Nations on Human Rights and called for a special session. And uh, currently, uh, just recently, uh, King Abdullah um, uh, Bil Abdul Aziz, His Majesty the King of uh, Saudi Arabia, has called for an OIC summit to be convened at the end of Ramadan to discuss certain issues uh, in the Islamic world and, and has specifically uh, noted the Rohingya situation. Um, to adopt recommendations on how to go about this. But I can t assure you that His Excellency, the Secretary General, um, used his good offices when he went to China um, recently and urged the Chinese government, being a very influential and uh, um, has, one that has very um, strong economic ties with Myanmar, to play a positive role in bringing the end of the violence. And what about OIC uh, countries like, uh, member countries like Bangladesh? I mean, they don't even want to give official refuge uh, to the Rohingya refugees, do they? Surely must well, have some influence with, with an OIC member state. Look, looking at, at uh, history, we can say that uh, Bangladesh is one of the biggest countries in terms of has the most um, ho has been hosting most refugees 
um, of the Rohingyas, more than 250,000 throughout the years, and not just uh, with today's violence. Um, but then again, we can't just put it all on one country, can we? We have to aid. We have to. This is why we have to call on all international uh, uh, member states as well as the Muslim states to aid in this and to create refuge as, uh, and with international organizations like the UNHCR. I'm sorry, but but I but I'd I think like you're to, protecting Bangladesh. I'd like Bangladesh to clear here. a few things here. Okay, I would uh, like to. one at a time. I think Brad wanted to get in here first, and I'll come to you in a moment, Mohammed, yeah, if I, I may. Go ahead, Brad. Yes. Thank you. I was just in Dhaka speaking to the Bangladeshi government about this at, at very senior levels, at the ministerial level. And uh, a, a deputy minister literally told me that we will uh, satisfy our obligations uh, by, and he picked up a bottle of water by giving a bottle of water to the people in the boats before we push them back out to sea. Now that's disgraceful. Uh, the Bangladeshi government has taken an absolutely hard and unprincipled line against the Rohingyas. And you know, it's, it's their bad luck perhaps, but they are the neighbor of Burma. They are neighboring this, this uh, part of Burma where the Rohingyas are seeking sanctuary. And it's but absolutely Brad, do inhumane they need, for them to Do the Bangladeshis need more help in order to absorb more? As Dina was absolutely. saying, they've, they've taken in huge numbers. Are, are they being asked too much? Uh, absolutely they need help. Uh, unfortunately, two years ago, they turned down $33 million in international assistance. Uh, to help not only the Rohingya community, but the communities in which the Rohingyas live in. They also turned down a resettlement offer from some Western countries. Not very many people, but it was a start. They say that if they provide any assistance, including more than a bottle of water, they will act as a pull factor. And you know that's just not good enough. When someone comes knocking on your door right. and their life is being threatened, then right. you must help them. All right, Mohammed is bristling to get I'm in here. Please go ahead. Yes, yes. What I would like to point out here is, yes, yes, uh, Bangladesh has taken an, uh, a huge effort to accommodate more than 250,000 refugees, Rohingya refugees since 19s, and, and, and now continuously doing, and international community are helping them to do that. But it does not justify, it does not justify to uh, people who are uh, fleeing for their country for the, for the sake of persecution and being killed and being raped. They come on the land who are Muslim and border and then push them back. Some even there are reports that uh, uh, border security have a fire, uh, fire on the boat, and some of them which have been uh, pushed back and fired by the helicopter and uh, by by the Burmese government. Uh, it does not justify B Bangladesh government to to do such an act inhum in inhuman or ingrated. Uh, degrading uh, Rohingyas in the, into this manner. All right. These people, uh, these Mohammed, people if I just could need uh, land. jump in here because time is, is getting a little short. Let's try and perhaps we'll take the discussion to Justin. And as we look at the future now, what ultimately is the plan, if there is one, from the Myanmar authorities and officials towards the Rohingya? Are they, some of the allegations say that security forces are actually joining in in the attacks. Do they want to drive them out the country? Keep them contained there. Uh, the or? security for yes, the security forces I think have over re reacted. Um, but Thane Sane I think would say it's been a, a strenuous policing job more than anything else. It's uh, seems to be quietening down a little at the moment. In answer to your previous question, what threat are the Rohingyas, more generally the uh, Muslim population of Rakhine State? Um, to uh, the government and the country. And the, uh, and the answer to that is, at the moment, very little. The danger is, um, and they're just the first signs of it happening now, is that uh, Islamic fundamentalists, um, uh, friends of Al-Qaeda, are starting to get interested in that. Um, and what's remarkable historically is, in fact, the Rohingyas uh, uh, have, have never mounted a full-scale insurgency campaign, uh, unlike other ethnic m minorities. Uh, but at the moment, things are heading for a situation where that could change and it could become uh, a seeding bed, a hotbed for, um, for, for fundamentalist groups. And you would then see what's, what's happening in southern Thailand for the last 10 years, happening again uh, in Myanmar, and I'm sure that the government doesn't want that. Therefore, uh, it really is in its own interests uh, for the uh, Myanmar government right. to reach uh, a fair settlement, help, hopefully with the support of the UNHCR. Let's hope those final words, let's hope those final words come true. Let's thank our guests, though, now, because we are running out of time. In Jeddah, Mohammed Noor. In London, Brad Adams. Also in London, Justin Wintle. And on the phone line from Jeddah, 
Dina Madani. And thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. As always, you know where to send us your feedback. Email us your thoughts to InsideStory at aljazeera.net. For now, it's goodbye.